Hi, Paradise Valley Church family, and happy Sabbath. This is a special Sabbath for us for a variety of reasons. First, it's the Sabbath before Christmas, this season where we remember the birth of Christ, that the God of the universe came down in the form of a baby to be here among us, Emmanuel, God with us. It's this incredible reminder that no matter what is happening in our lives, we have this evidence that God can overcome even the biggest gap, find us where we are, and be God with us. And so whatever your Christmas plans or celebrations, we invite you to keep this in the heart of this time, that we are commemorating and remembering the birth of Christ. We have a couple of special announcements that we want to share today. The first is that today is uh, our associate pastor, Pastor Paul's final Sabbath with us. He has been such an important part of this church family, especially for our youth over the past four and a half years, and he's been such a blessing to so many of us. We're going to hear him preach his final sermon in just a couple of minutes later in this service, but we also want to invite you to join us this evening at 7 p.m. for a Christmas party and farewell to Pastor Paul. Given our situation, we're going to be doing it online, and you can access this. We sent out the Zoom link in the email yesterday, but if you didn't receive that email or have lost it, you can also go to our church website at pvchurch.org, pvchurch.org, and you will see a little, um, on the home page, you'll see a little card that says uh, virtual Christmas party. You just click on that and the Zoom information will come up. So once again, you just go to the home website, pvchurch.org. You have to open up the home website. You'll see a little card that says uh, virtual Christmas party and you can click on that. We also have in that section a, a sign up for raffles. We have some um, prizes that we're giving away at the end of our time tonight and we invite you to sign up so that you can be part of that. If you sign up your name, we'll draw from that. There's a high likelihood that you'll be able to get something. So you, we invite you to go onto our website, pvchurch.org, and um, sign up for the raffle as well. Christmas is often a time of, of celebration, of festivities, of fun decor. This is um, another angle in my living room. You know, you probably haven't seen this backdrop before, but it's just the wall from where you normally see me over over this whole summertime, you see me in my living room. So we often have festivities, we, we decorate our homes, but it can also be a challenging time of year. For so many of us, if we've lost loved ones, if we've experienced loss this year, if our relationship with our families isn't quite as we want, Christmas can be a, a season where we remember what we've lost. This year in particular, we know that there's been so many losses. And so we, in collaboration with a number of area churches, South Bay, Chula Vista, La Mesa, have put together a blue Christmas service tomorrow, Sunday, at 7 p.m. You can find it online, again, on our pvchurch.org website. There'll be a little card that says Blue Christmas, and you can access it there. Or you can also go to our Facebook page. We will have a watch party that you can watch there, or our YouTube channel. So if you or someone you know or love or have cared about might benefit from this, we invite you to share this information. We have it on Facebook. We invite you to share the invitation that we have so that anybody who might be having a challenging time this Christmas can come together for some words of remembrance and hope. That Christmas, that first Christmas, wasn't only nostalgia and children giggling. That first Christmas, Jesus was born in a challenging time. But no matter what our situation is, whether things are bright and happy or things seem really dark, the reality is this, that Christ was born a baby among us. And we give thanks for that. 
Right now, as we enter into our worship time together, I invite you to bow your heads with me for a special prayer. I would like to pray a special prayer for Pastor Paul as he goes on to uh, the uh, Andrews Seminary. I pray a blessing for his time there. If you'll bow your heads with me for prayer. Our gracious God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this service. Today, we have so many prayer requests and praises, but I want to just lift up in a particular way, Pastor Paul, who will be sharing his final sermon with us. God, we thank you so much for the gift that he has been to this church. We thank you for the ways in which he has used his gifts and talents for your glory, God. We thank you for the ways in which he has helped lead, grow, mentor our youth and the ways that they are stepping into leadership now because of the work that has been done. God, I want to pray a special blessing on Pastor Paul. Bless his time in the seminary. Bless him with great professors, wonderful conversations, good classmates. Most importantly, bless him with a growing relationship with you, God, where he is inspired anew where he delves deep into your word. God, we thank you for the blessing he's been to us. And we know that you will continue to use him to bless others. We pray for our service here together. May your presence be among us. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. And happy Sabbath. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. I invite you all to sing along with us. O oh, come, all ye faithful. O oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful triumphant O oh, come ye O oh, come ye to Bethlehem come and behold him born the king of angels O oh, come let us adore him O oh, come let us Adore him, oh come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Oh sing, choir of angels, sing in exaltation. Sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. Adore, 
Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Paradise Valley Church. It is now time for our tithe and offering. As always, you offer, the tithe goes to the conference and then to the mission field, but your offering stays locally to help with the church and all of our projects. Thank you for giving this year. It's been a long year, but you've still given and we thank you so much. If you have a special offering you'd like to give before this month ends, please do so. Remember, you can send your tithe in by mail, or you can drop it in the box at church, or you can pay online. Thank you so much for your support. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your kindness, for giving us means that we can give back to you. Bless each and every member as we give, let it be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Bless these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us in singing our prayer song. Have your way. your way. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and have your way. As we wait and as we pray, speak your word to our hearts and have your way have your way have your way holy spirit fill our hearts and have your way As we wait and as we pray, speak your words into our hearts and have your way. Speak your word into our hearts and have your way. I invite you all to continue singing along with us. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. 
It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Our Father in Heaven, at this Christmas season we just stand in awe at the fact that you would come here, Emmanuel, and be with us. It's been a hard year and we really appreciate the fact that you've been with us all year. It was a hard time when Jesus came too so many years ago. And so today we ask that you will continue to be with us and open our minds and hearts to feel your presence. Be with those among our congregation who are not well, those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. And around our world, we need your healing touch. We ask for that today and we thank you for it. And just keep our hearts tuned to you during this special season. And may in everything we say and do and think glorify you the great Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you so much for being with us this year. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church family. It's a bit sad for me personally that we don't get to meet together in person and uh, that I have the opportunity to preach for you in person as we have been and I've had the opportunity to do for the past couple months. But regardless, I'm so thankful that we're able to gather like this, even if it's online, to worship God, to praise God all together. Thank you for your continued commitment to joining us, regardless of the circumstances, uh, despite the pandemic and all the craziness in the world around us. I wanted to start off my message today by sharing with you something that my friends and I have been doing for quite some time, not as much anymore, uh, although it does happen once in a while. And this used to happen uh, a, a lot more when we were younger. So when we were younger, especially, my friends and I, and we still do this now, uh, after a long day of work or school or whatever we were tied up in at the time, we would come together online into a voice chatting app where all of us could join and we just hang out and we talk with each other. 
we talk about a variety of things we uh, talk about our days about the stresses of life about uh, the things that annoyed us the things that made us happy and then we'd also spend some time maybe watching uh, movies or videos online together we'd maybe play a few games together just spend some time fellowshipping hanging out and uh, just having a good time together after a long day of hard work or whatever was going on and so we do this quite often like I say and we still do this to this day but especially back then there were these moments often where as we were gathering together online we would suddenly have to ur the urge to want to do something something that oftentimes maybe wasn't the best choice or necessarily uh, the healthiest choice for us but uh, we just had those sudden urges especially being young to give you an example uh, there were moments uh, where we would meet uh, and this is again after uh, a day of working or school or whatever we'd meet and it would be maybe 10 30 11 pushing even midnight sometimes pretty closely at night where one of us in the group and it could be any of us would suddenly crave some food and so we would say to everyone else man i'm really feeling some food right now maybe it was mcdonald's maybe it was burger king maybe it was in and out whatever food chain or whatever was open or whatever was near us at the time any one of us at any moment could say man i'm really craving this and sometimes it wasn't food sometimes it was also maybe making a purchase online like a nice pair of shoes or some clothes or some parts for our computers or other technological devices or a variety of different things online that we didn't necessarily need we probably shouldn't buy uh, because again not a need for us in our life and quite expensive a lot of times but we really just kind of had that urge that desire to want to do it anyways and so we would voice this desire and seeking the approval of our fellow friends we would ask hey guys should we should i do this should i go get this food should i buy this thing should i do this most of the times we would be that good friend and say come on man you don't need to get it you don't need to do that but there were times where we would quote unquote enable each other and during these times when we would enable each other we would say this following phrase every single time without fail we would say dude honestly you gotta do what makes you happy again you gotta do what makes you happy now whenever i think about this phrase you gotta do what makes you happy it always brings a smile to my face. It always makes me chuckle a little bit because, again, this is kind of like a little running joke that we always have whenever we're trying to make these bad decisions in life and we want to get the approval of our friends. We jokingly say, you got to do what makes you happy, man. But it's interesting because whenever I think about this phrase and whenever I think about this saying that we always say to each other, it also invokes in me this deep thought and specifically this deep question that I had for a lot of my life and especially uh, when I was in high school that I struggled with quite a bit. The question that I struggled with in high school especially was this question. Is the ultimate goal, is the ultimate end goal of life to be happy? Is that my aim? Is that my goal in life? to find to have happiness i find this question so interesting to think about and again it's a question that i thought about for a very long period in my personal life especially in my teenage years and growing up in high school and it's a question that i want to look at in scripture today and try to answer hopefully for all of us today and so to do that i want to invite you uh, as you're uh, watching from your homes to join me in scripture we're going to be looking today at Matthew chapter 10 verses 5 through 7 16 through 17 and then 37 through 39 again that's Matthew chapter 10 verses 5 through 7 16 through 17 and then 37 through 39 
Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 through 7. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Verses 16 through 17. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. And finally, verses 37 through 39. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. When we look at the context of these very challenging words that Jesus shares with us, we see that at the time that Jesus spoke these words, he was actually speaking to the disciples who were getting ready to go out and do ministry. The disciples had been following Christ for a period of time now. They had been witnessing him preaching to these crowds and doing these miracles. And now was their turn to go out and do the same thing. We see that at the beginning of this chapter, in fact, Jesus gives the disciples the authority to be able to perform miracles of healing and to drive out demons and evil spirits. And I can imagine that the disciples at this time, as they were getting ready to go out, were very excited. They're very motivated. And as they're getting ready to go, Jesus shares with them these final words. But rather than it being words of inspiration and motivation, these words seem to be very sad and frankly depressing words that Jesus shares with them. Jesus tells the disciples as they're going out that when they're out there, they're going to be like sheep among wolves, which if you've watched any animal documentaries involving those two animals, is not a very pretty sight. He talks about how the disciples will be persecuted by religious authorities, by governments, by rulers, by governors, by kings, how they will be arrested and tried and whipped and flogged. He talks about how the disciples will witness and see and experience families betraying each other, sons going against fathers, daughters going against mothers. He talks about how your worst enemies will often be found in and among your own relatives or in your own families. These are very scary, very uninspiring words that Jesus shares with the disciples as they're getting ready to go out and do ministry. And to be quite frank with you, these are words that share the reality of what discipleship under Christ is like. Christ shares with us he shared with the disciples and with us today the fact that discipleship, that following him, isn't easy. Choosing to follow Christ doesn't mean that your life will suddenly be worry-free, that you won't have to think about or worry about any of the stresses in life. In fact, oftentimes choosing to follow and devote your life to Christ means the opposite. It means that you're going to face more temptations and more attacks from Satan than ever, ever before. It means that you're going to struggle being persecuted, facing so many different hardships and struggles in your daily life. Reading these, these verses and thinking about the challenging aspects of what it means to truly be a disciple of Christ really made it difficult for me, being younger, to think about committing myself to following Christ. The reason for this is because when I was younger, I truly believed that the ultimate meaning, the ultimate goal of life was to simply be happy. This is especially given that during my high school times, I faced a lot of hardships personally in my life, a lot of moments where I was very angry, very sad, very depressed. And so for me, the ultimate goal of life was to seek happiness, to surround yourself with people, to have things around you that all made you happy, that filled you with joy, every single day. And not only that, um, but adding to this confusion about wanting to follow Christ was this weird reaction at the time that I thought that the disciples had in response to these words that Jesus had for them. Rather than shying away 
rather than being uninspired, unmotivated, and not following Jesus and giving up going out and being disciples for him. After hearing these words, the disciples go out and in fact do even more. They follow Jesus more passionately. They follow Jesus and go out and do all these miracles. They experience this persecution. They experience these hardships, even knowing beforehand that they would be doing so. I'm a type of person who, when I know something is going to be very painful or hard for me, I do all I can to avoid it. Yet these disciples, knowing that they're going to face these things, chose to dive headfirst into this ministry that Jesus had presented to them, this challenge of discipleship, of following Christ. Looking at this and studying this for much of my teenage life really confused me. And it made me really think about, is happiness the ultimate goal that we should all be chasing? And I know that I'm not alone in this, this struggle, this doubt, this questioning of the meaning of life. In fact, I feel like all of us today even are struggling sometimes with this goal, this desire, this, this want of achieving happiness. Especially given that we are facing a pandemic this year in 2020. There are so many families that have lost their homes, that have lost loved ones, that have gone through so much hardship this year, that have experienced so much tragedy. And it's a question I'm sure on many people's minds, why is it so hard sometimes in life for us to just be happy? for us to achieve happiness. But this is a question that didn't just arise this year after the pandemic happened to us. It's a question that we've struggled with throughout the course of the human history. Even just last year, we can see that before this pandemic, there was a great increase in the number of suicides and drug overdose related deaths. In fact, Suicides and drug overdose related deaths have now overtaken deaths by car accidents here in the US. Which is surprising for me because when I was in high school, car accidents were one of the major causes of death in the United States. We see that we're living in a world, in a country, where people are struggling with life, struggling to live, so much to the point where so many of them are killing themselves. And so, the fundamental question again appears for me. Is the pursuit, is the ultimate goal in life to be happy? Is that the ultimate destination, to live a life where we're just happy every single day? Recent years in ministry, in studying and growing in college, and meeting and talking to, every pe to people every single day, Experiencing this pandemic in the world around us has really affirmed in me the belief, this idea, the thought that happiness is not the ultimate goal of life. Philosophically speaking, it's frankly impossible because none of us are always happy every single day. Happiness is something that comes to us at random moments when we, when we experience good things. But life as we all know, is very often not just full of moments of happiness, but moments of tragedy, moments of difficulty, moments of hardship. Philosophically speaking, it is frankly impossible for any of us to truly achieve happiness every single day in our lives. And so, if happiness isn't the ultimate goal, the question then is, what is? What is the ultimate goal of life? For me, I've come to the realization and to the answer that the ultimate goal of life is to live a life of purpose. Again, the ultimate goal of life is to live a life of purpose. And to be more, more specific, not just any purpose, but God's purpose for your life. I say this specifically because anyone in life can live with any purpose that they put for themselves. 
But there's a difference, a major difference in the purpose that we as humans can set for ourselves and the purpose that God has for us. And I can think of no more of a powerful example in recent times than the life of a man named Tony Shea. Now, for those of us who don't know who Tony Shea is, Tony Shea was a billionaire who recently passed away at the age of 46. He passed away, I believe, on November 27th of this year, so very recently. Now, Tony Shea was someone who found success very early in life. In his early 20s, he uh, very successfully made a lot of money and after making investments eventually in his life, made billions of dollars and became uh, the owner of a very large and wealthy corporation. He eventually retired from that position after becoming a billionaire and he went on to use his wealth, his money, his influence to go around to major cities around the country, around the world to try and really bring change and reform and all these things for poor people, people in um, uh, underdeveloped or very poor areas in these major cities. Tony Shea was someone who was very admirable in a lot of the things that he did. But even despite having achieved everything that we as humans typically attribute to success and ultimate goals and purpose in life, we see that Tony Shea felt empty. He felt a void. He struggled even while doing all these things to really find something meaningful, something that filled him with true purpose in his life. And we see that eventually Tony Shea try to fill that void, that, that meaningful purpose through drugs, through partying, through a lot of very unhealthy lifestyle choices that eventually, eventually spiraled down to him being very erratic, very, being very irrational. One of his closer friends wrote to him that he was killing himself and three months later he died. Tony Shea embodied everything that many people typically attribute to having achieved success and reached, having reached the goals in life. And yet Tony Shea found out the truth that all these things are meaningless. All these things are pointless. No matter how much money, no matter how much success you achieve, when you die, that all means nothing. It doesn't go with you into the grave. It just disappears. There's only one thing that transcends this life, our mortality, that transcends death, and that is Jesus Christ. Christ has transcended and has won the victory over death. Christ is the one who gives us as Christians meaning purpose and hope beyond anything that we could ever imagine despite the tragedies, the difficulties, the empty void that this world fills us with in our lives today. To follow Christ is something truly beautiful. Jesus gives us true purpose, true meaning, true hope that nothing else, nothing in this world could ever give us. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. It is apparent, church, that Jesus is the only one who truly gives us meaning, truly gives us hope, truly gives us purpose in life to be able to, to fill that longing, fill that need that all of us have, to fill that empty void that drove someone like Tony Shea to death. Jesus is the true answer, the true purpose that we as people need in our lives. Church, as I come to a close to my final message for you, here as your youth pastor uh, at Paradise Valley Church, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for the way you've treated me over these past four years. Thank you so much for the kindness, the love, the support 
that you've shown me, something that I can tell you from experience isn't so apparent in other churches that you may go to. Thank you, church, for helping me to grow not only in wisdom, not only in knowledge, not only in experience, but also in physical size as I've eaten quite a bit of food with all of our kids here. Thank you, kids. Thank you, guys. Thank you to the youth for helping me to experience a joy unlike that which I've experienced for a lot of my life. It's truly become apparent to me that God called me here to this church. And while I'm sad to leave, I'm so, so excited to see the direction, uh, the growth that this church will continue to have as it goes on into the future. As I close again, I just want to emphasize to you all, and I want to remind you all of the importance, the significance of what it means to fill that purpose, to choose God's purpose in your life going forward. Especially to our young people, I want to emphasize to you all, life tells you, people in the world tell you that money, that being popular, that achieving success by being rich and successful, that marrying into a, a nice family and having a good relationship, these things will fill you with purpose and meaning and happiness in life but I can tell you from personal experience and so many others and so many experiences of the people around us share with us that that is not the case. The most important thing, most powerful thing, most powerful purpose you can have in life is to serve and have a relationship with Jesus. Church, I pray that we all can move forward with this purpose, that we all, despite the challenges of this year, can say, I find happiness, I find motivation, I find energy to push on through the struggles, through the trials of life, because God is here with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you again for giving me the opportunity over these four years to have truly been a part of an amazing, wonderful, loving church. It's become apparent to me, Lord, over these past four years that it truly is your purpose and your will in our lives that gives us happiness, motivation, and energy to overcome the trials, the tragedies, the tribulations that life may throw at us. I want to pray a special blessing upon this church as I leave to go and continue my education at Andrews, may you be with them as they're in the season of transition. And may you be with the pastoral staff. May you be with everyone, Lord, as we're moving into a new season, as we're heading into a new year. Thank you, Lord, so much again for this wonderful honor, this wonderful privilege that I've had to be here at this church. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.